Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the presentation about Pineview Valley Elementary uh, Community Engagement, and it's our webinar this evening. And we just want to start by acknowledging that we are meeting in the unceded territory of the land of the Squamish people, and we are very appreciative you're here today with us on this land and wherever you may be coming from. Tonight, you are joined by, um, I will share, I'm Rhonda Nixon, the superintendent. Art McDonald, director of facilities. Jane Latta, principal of McGowan. Vessi Mochikas, assistant superintendent, inclusive education. Grant Riley, assistant superintendent, elementary education. So thank you. I'm going to begin the presentation and the presentation will contain the following information, some background information on the project, the engagement and planning process, then the site plans and floor plans and the project schedule. So first of all, I'm just going to go to a different screen. Uh, just to show you some history in Pineview Valley, this was the last aerial photo the city of Kamloops did in 2020. Just to orient yourselves, and then I'm going to work backwards. So Copperhead Drive comes through here, ends about here currently. This is Hugh Allen Drive, and Python Lake is this area in here. And our school site is this area in here. So I'm going to go back to the 1994 aerial photo. Um, although it's black and white, you can see at that time there was no development in this area. It was just uh, uninhabited. And down here you can see uh, Python Lake in this area. I'm going to go to 1999. And you can see there's some development on the west side, particularly in the northwest corner, uh, and then roads and some subdivisions being built along the west side. And you can see at that time, uh, Python Lake was basically divided in two. When we get to 2004, a lot more infill on the west side of Pineview Valley and a bit more development more towards the south. And you can see Python Lake and the sort of the rest of the channel going over towards Hugh Allen and Copperhead, where the water goes into the city stormwater system. Get to 2008, the west side is pretty much filled out by then and new development over on sort of the foxtail side in the south area and roads and subdivisions going in on the east side as well. 2012, we can see that this southeast portion is pretty much filled in with houses and there's starting to be some work uh, where some of the apartment buildings are currently. In 2016, the east side is pretty much filled in for that area. And there's some houses over in this area. And I'm just gonna skip right back again to 2020 so we can see that this area to the Northeast is pretty much filled in at that time. And the reason for explaining this is we do get lots of questions about why are we building a school in Pineview Valley? And we just wanna show that it's absolutely tied to the growth in the area. So the project was first identified in the 2014-2015 capital plan of the school district. We received ministry support in May of 2021. The project definition report, which is basically confirmation of why the schools needed and the business case was submitted in spring of 2022. And we received our funding announcement February 22nd, 2023. Some particulars of the school, it's a K-7 school with an operating capacity of 453 students. We anticipate the school will open at about 60% um, because we have sized the school for the remaining future development. And there's quite a bit of it to the east and south of the school site. The overall project budget is just over $65 million and we're expected to be complete prior to September, 2026. And again, I'm going to go through some more details. I'm going to go fairly quickly because I want to save time for the drawings and for the question and answer session at the end. So I'll be talking about area standards, more details on the budget, and some of the issues around the site. 
So when the ministry funds a school project, we have to adhere to area standards. So basically they set out the standards for the size of the school based on the capacity of the school. And it defines things like classroom sizes, gymnasium sizes, how much office space we get, so on and so forth. During early design, we must send the ministry a drawing indicating that all the functionary sizes are in compliance. So we can't just arbitrarily decide that we wanna make the gym twice as big and they would go along with it. We have to maintain the area standards. And we have very little leeway with these function areas, although the ministry does recognize that room areas can't always be exact uh, to their prescribed area. So they do allow a little leeway either way. And I can tell you the areas provided are not generous, particularly when we compare these to some of our older schools. And as an example, in some of our older schools, we have classrooms that are over a thousand square feet, where in the new schools, they're under 900 square feet. So for the budget, prior to getting funding support, um, we did prepare some preliminary plans to make sure our budget was accurate prior to the funding approval. The overall project budget, as I mentioned, is just over 65 million, and it's broken down as follows, about six and a half million dollars for soft costs, which includes things like design fees, building permits, uh, equipment to outfit the school, insurance during construction and all the taxes. The building itself is estimated to be just over $28 million. The site works portion is estimated to be just over $13 million. We also received $3.61 million for what's called the Neighborhood Learning Center. And basically that's an allocation of money that as a district in consultation, we decide how to use that. We've also got $7.5 million for offsite services, and that covers the city requirements, as well as the Copperhead Drive extension that the school district is responsible to pay a portion of. We've also got just over $6 million in what's called risk reserve items, and this is money that we don't get unless we can show a need during the project. And these are for things like if the market changes dramatically and costs, you know, for instance, skyrocket. Um, if the offsite requirements from the city change during the design of the project, if we find some kind of soil issues or scheduling delays. So within the budget, we've got money for hybrid mass timber. We've got money for greenhouse gas reduction strategies. And during the process of design, we do cost estimates. And we must stay on budget throughout prior to going to tender. And if we are over budget based on our last cost estimate before tender, we must get on budget before the ministry will allow us to go out to tender. So as far as the site, um, in terms of building a school, it is a very difficult site. It's triangular. It's on the side of the hill, which predicates us needing a two-story school. We've got significant elevation changes across the site, about 17 meters from the high point to the low point. We're constrained by Copperhead Drive to the east. Python Lake to the north. And then we've also got some offsite considerations that we have to take into account until the development above us is complete. And mainly it's where does all the snow melt go uh, when we get to the spring. So as far as the engagement and planning process, we're following the IAP2 continuum and we're using the collaboration portion of that model where we are looking for feedback to help develop our design. And we've had several community engagement committee meetings and from our meeting on April 26th, the major themes that came out were the importance of diverse indoor and outdoor spaces. So things like multi-purpose rooms, inside outside adaptable spaces, design outdoor spaces for indigenous plants, flexible adaptable spaces. So things like operable walls to separate the library multi-purpose room to allow for a larger room for larger functions. Take into account the beauty of the lake and the trails, things like can we use the trails for classes, teach about ecology and species in the area, and potentially use the hillside for seating. Again, from that meeting, the Neighborhood Learning Center, it was decided that we would use the space allocation to expand the gymnasium. So the gymnasium will be slightly larger than an elementary sized gym with the idea that we would have a bit more space around the perimeter for spectators. We used some of the allocation to add an Aboriginal education room, and the remaining allocation was to add a before and after school care room. Pedagogies, which is sort of the learning environment, uh, use the vertical whiteboards on the outside of classroom cubbies 
So basically within each classroom, we've got cubbies that have vertical sliding, whiteboards and pin boards. So once the kids have put away their backpacks and boots and coats for the day, they can use those whiteboards for things like learning, class assignments, et cetera. There's a big push for open spaces and windows to allow access to light, and then similarly to provide darker spaces for project work, and then just generally leverage the ecology in the area. For the site, for, sorry, for the facility plans, we reduced the number of change rooms and added more washrooms. The multi-purpose room uh, was desired to have multi-functions so we could have art, band, and multi other things in that room. Then also wheelchair access around the site without going into the building. Storage was another large issue that was brought up. Uh, the desire was to maximize storage throughout the building. The June 7th meeting, all that was taken into account. So the updated plans were well received. The major themes from that meeting were parking and vehicle access. There was a desire for more parking. And there was concern about too many vehicles at peak times, mainly morning drop off and afternoon pickup, which is a standard problem at all of our schools. There were also concerns about the northwest corner of the field and the proximity to the lake. Then the last meeting of the committee was on October 20th. And the main themes from that were active transportation. Again, concerns about the northwest corner of the field and proximity to the lake and trying to maintain the existing trail networks as best as we could. Other engagement opportunities, um, meetings with the Ministry of Forest and Ministry of Environment on August 4th. Their main items were finalizing the water license to divert Python Creek, and I will get into that when I go through the drawings. Provide as much natural vegetation in the stream channel as possible, and offset for the pond area, which again, I will get into when I go through the drawings, and that leads to naturalization of the west end of the site. And was there an opportunity to relocate any of the existing plants around the pond area? On August 9th, Superintendent Nixon and myself met with the Kamloops Naturalist Club and their main areas of concern were loss of habitat with one of the questions, why can't the play field be smaller? And again, I will talk about that when I go through the drawings. The aesthetics of the large retaining walls, in particular the ones surrounding the play field, access to the existing path network, and possible relocation of existing plants around the pond area. Indigenous consultation, Mike Bowden, our district principal for Aboriginal education is on the community engagement committee. Uh, Tecumloops was also on the committee. We did a presentation similar to this to our Aboriginal education council on September 21st. And we are still having further consultation with Tecumloops regarding the indigenous garden area. And in some other areas we've received feedback from, Dr. Trent Smith, who is an advocate of active transportation, our District Parent Advisory Council, the Aberdeen Neighborhood Association, and various other community members and partners. As far as the schedule, the Earthworks Tender Package, that is in progress, as I'm sure you're all aware. That package includes removal of trees, stripping of the site, uh, some bulk excavation, and the reason we're doing this at this time of year is we need to avoid the bird nesting times in the spring. The rest of the building and site package is scheduled to come out in February with a contract award around May and have the school open for September 2026. So now I'm going to shift gears and go to the drawings. So in this drawing, this was just an aerial photo that our architect did with their drone. And all we've done is overlay in the black outline. That is our property line. Couple key areas up in the southeast corner. So the bottom right corner of the drawing, that is where we have to pick up Python Creek. So those that aren't aware, um, the province has on a map that a Python Creek runs through this area and down into Python Lake. So we have to divert that through our site. When I mentioned the pond area, it was this area in here where there was some vegetation, and some standing water. And as you can see, based on the outline of the site, these are the trails that will be removed as part of our project. And it'll also show where we're providing some new trails.
This is the same drawing with the school and site plan superimposed. So over in the top right corner of the drawing, uh, the existing gravel portion of Copperhead Road ends up here. So Copperhead Road will be extended and the city is working on that now. We come in off Copperhead Drive, come into the parking area in this portion of the site. The yellow portion is the school. And surrounding the school, we've got a bunch of paved hard surface areas for things like basketball, four square hopscotch, et cetera. Then we've got our play field area over here. Now it's a little hard to see on the drawing. I'll zoom in a little bit. But if you follow the cursor from the bottom right corner, this meandering blue gray line, that is the diversion of Python Creek. And that is how we're still working on this west end of the site to figure out what we want to do at this end in terms of do we create a new pond to replace the old one or how do we do that and still get the water to drain into Python Lake. This pink line in the bottom right corner, that is one large retaining wall so that separates the upper portion of the site from the parking lot. This red line here is our accessible pathway from the upper parking lot down to the field. So as I mentioned in consultation, one of the asks was to make sure people could access the field after hours when the school was closed and the elevator was not available. And then this west end of the site where we have already had questions from community members, this is the portion of the site that we are looking to naturalize. And the reason we're looking at that is the pond area that I mentioned, we are required to offset that, which basically means try to replace what was there. And as part of our discussions with the Ministry of Forest, the Ministry of Environment, we are going to look to naturalize this area to offset the loss of the pond and some of the other things on the site. I did mention looking at offsetting trails. So on the north side of the site, it's a little hard to see, but this Brown colored line is a new trail that we will be providing from the school courtyard area up here down to the existing trail network. This is just a 3D rendering looking from the north side. So up in the upper left hand corner is Copperhead Drive. We come into the parking area. You can see the two-story school. This block here is mostly classrooms. In here is the library multi-purpose area and the gymnasium off to the right. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got hard surface play areas here for the students. This brown area here is a playground. And this brown and blue area over here is a playground built into the side of the hill. Right here is the accessible pathway coming down. Now move to the right of the site. This is the stream channel for the diversion of Python Creek comes through here. And we've got the large retaining wall surrounding the field on this side. And this is the new pathway along the north side. One of the questions we've had a lot of, well, a lot of questions and answers about is, can we make the field smaller? And just for some context, we are aware of our proximity to Python Lake. We're staying a minimum of 10 meters away. This field, although it looks large, is about the same size as what's over at Dufferin Elementary for their play field. But when this school is built out, it will have over twice as many students. So we're trying to be cognizant of the fact that we do need a larger play area for the kids than Dufferin Elementary. So we don't want to make that any smaller. This is a view looking from the southeast corner. So again, we come off Copperhead into the school, the parking area. The front entrance is right here. Off to the left is the office block. Then we've got our kindergarten rooms. We have purposely put our kindergarten rooms on this upper floor to allow easier access for parents and the children because a lot of times kindergarten kids need a little more support from their parents before and after school. Then we've got a stairway going down into a courtyard area here. We've got our two-story classroom block. Over to the left is the gymnasium. Play field up at the top of this drawing and this pathway going down the north side of the site connecting to the existing pathways. Surrendering from the northwest, 
again, looking at the school over here. And again, we've had lots of feedback on the retaining wall. What can we do to make it look less retaining wall like? And we will be providing trees along this that once they're grown in, won't eliminate the look of the retaining wall, but will definitely soften it. So just a close up rendering of the front entrance in here, as I mentioned, the office block here and off to the right is our two story classroom block. We're showing quite a few bike racks for this site. This may or may not be the final placement, but we will have a lot of bike racks. That has been again, something we've heard through consultation and active transportation. The view looking at the two-story classroom block in this area here, as I mentioned, hard surface, basketball hoops, all of those things, library multi-purpose in the middle and the gymnasium off to the right. And just a close up of the library multi-purpose area and the gymnasium. So in terms of aesthetics, our architect has tried to make it look somewhat residential, to try to fit the look of the neighborhood. So I'm just gonna go in the floor plans. Again, I know it's difficult to see and I will zoom in a little bit once I do the overview. So front entrance is this area here. We've got the front office block in this area here. So principal, vice principal, staff room, health room, photocopy room. The three kindergarten rooms are off to the left and each kindergarten room is outfitted with its own washroom. This is the two-story gymnasium, set of stairways, our custodial room, special education room, one of two. And then we've got our double height library space here. I'm gonna zoom in on this classroom block a little bit. So all standard size classrooms, they're all outfitted the same. So they've all got cabinetry and a sink. And this line here, is the cubbies I mentioned earlier. So each classroom has those. As far as washrooms, we are using single stall washrooms. So they aren't the old style where they're partitions. These are actually individual rooms. We've taken some of our special ed allocation to create sort of smaller special ed rooms. They also double as meeting rooms and little project rooms for the students to work together. So they're not sitting in the hallways. Then the lower floor is somewhat similar uh, gymnasium. And as mentioned, we've got it a bit wider to allow some spectator room on down the sides, gym storage room, a few change rooms, but not too many, a couple universal washrooms. Then we move in, we've got our multi-purpose room, which has the special ed room above it. I mentioned an operable wall before between the library and the multi-purpose room. So that's what those diagonal lines are indicating. We've got this really nice library space that's two stories with a stairway up to the second floor. Got a block of four classrooms here. And then on the sort of lower portion of the drawing, we've got our main special ed room with full toileting facilities. We've got our ab ed room with a mini kitchen. We've got our before and after school care room and then three classrooms. The washrooms and the special ed rooms in the corridor, just a mirror image of what's above. So this is just a rendering. If you were to come in the front door and turn towards the second floor portion of the library and look down the classroom block. So as I mentioned, we are funded for mass timber. So we've got some mass timber elements. And when we're talking mass timber, if you were to think of plywood made out of two by fours, that's about the easiest description I can give you. And we'll also be supplementing that with glue lambs and post and beam construction in other areas. This is the multi-purpose room on the first floor. So it's fully outfitted with mini kitchen. This would be the operable wall connecting the multi-purpose room and the library. And we also made sure we had outside access to allow events to spill out outside. This is a view of the library from the second floor area, even though there's not a second floor in the library, but you can see down, it's a very nice volume, lots of light with all the windows. And you can see the 
beam and wood decking construction for the ceiling. Again, it gives it a bit of warmth and we do want to use wood as it's a natural resource. Looking the opposite direction from the lower floor of the library, you can see the stair going up to the second floor, main doors out onto the first floor, and at the far end, the operable wall for the multi-purpose room. These are sort of typical classroom layouts. I'll, I'll zoom in and move around a little bit. This is what you would see coming in from the corridor. So on one wall, we've got whiteboards and the projector. We've got our HVAC unit in the corner, windows with storage underneath that, exterior doors. So all of the first floor classrooms have exterior doors. And these are the cubbies I mentioned earlier with the vertical sliding whiteboards and pin boards. And on the first floor, we have T-bar ceilings in each of the rooms, which is different than the second floor. If I zoom into this area here, this is looking from the opposite corner. So the door at the top is the corridor door. We've got cabinetry with a sink. So quite a bit of storage for teaching supplies and our whiteboards with the projector over in this area. So same kind of picture just on the second floor and you may, may have seen on the renderings that we're using a pitch roof mainly to match kind of the residential feel of the neighborhood. So this will be built out of glue lamb beams with wood decking. And in the classroom that the rendering was done, there was a hybrid mass timber wall, cubbies again, outside windows, obviously no exterior door on the second floor and whiteboards and pin boards. And just looking from the opposite corner towards the corridor, same layout as the lower floor door to the corridor, lots of storage and a sink. And then the last drawing, this is a rendering of the gymnasium looking from what would be the east corner. This rendering is a bit old, so a few things have changed. We will not have down swinging basketball hoops. They will be sidewall on the ends, but you can see, again, a lot of use of natural wood, and I think it looks quite nice. So that concludes that part. Now we've just added some things that after the meeting, if we don't get to your question or you come up with ideas later or questions later, uh, and this will be made public, this is how you can provide feedback. You go to the SD73 website, you click on the Board of Education tab, then you would click on the blue circle, the new Pineview Valley Elementary School, scroll down to how to get involved, and you click on facility input. And that would allow you to provide your question. And what we are doing is we're taking all questions and we are responding to them on the website so that everybody can see the answer. And step five, um, you also see FAQs, as I mentioned, are updated here with the last date specified and tonight's presentation will also be posted here. So thank you. Uh, we will begin the FAQ session. So our first question is Pineview School within walking distance of all the residences in Pineview neighborhood. Uh, if we're talking about our busing policy, the answer would be yes. The second part of the question is what is the greatest walking distance? That is something we will have to put into the FAQ section as a response. So our second question is what type of lighting will be used, fluorescent or LED? Uh, we will be using dimmable LED throughout the building. So our next question is when will the bulk soil removal end? The contractor at this time is trying to be out uh, prior to Christmas break. Uh, that is somewhat dependent on weather. I can tell you though, that once we have the next tender package go out, there still will be removal of some soil and import of soil as well.
So if you're if you're looking to ask a question, you go to the bottom and you click on click on the Q and A tab, and you will be able to submit your question there. Our next question, will the Copperhead Drive Road instead of the Access Road be used? If we're talking during construction, that will depend on when the city completes Copperhead Drive. Um, obviously, once Copperhead Drive is completed, we will be using that. What type of surface will the playground be? It would be great if it was that rubber compound that wheelchairs and people with mobility issues could use. We will have a mix of the rubber compound and engineered wood fiber. The rubber compound will be provided for all of the accessible swings and probably an area to get into the playground with engineered fiber making up the rest of it. Will there be a trail access from Arnica Drive to the south and Aberdeen neighborhood on the south side of the lot? So currently there are no trail accesses planned on the south side of the lot because that is all private property above us. Okay, so next question. I am curious of amenities included in the final scope or what sorts of things might a future pack need to fundraise for, i.e. playground equipment, sound systems, scoreboards, basketball hoops, classroom sports equipment, sports equipment, et cetera. So pretty much everything that's on this question is provided as part of the building. Playground equipment is there. Sound systems where needed are in scoreboards, basketball hoops, classroom sports equipment, and general sports equipment will be provided. Um, however, at some point in the future, the school may decide they want other things. Hi, Lisa Grant here. I think one of the things that we've learned from schools reopening or new opening of schools is uh, jerseys are a huge cost to schools right off the top. And if Pat can fundraise for jerseys, that would be awesome. How will the Pineview community access the spaces for community use? Um, so I would suggest that would be like all of our other schools where we have a rental process and you would just contact the board office and create a booking for your group. Questions regarding the replacement pond, a desire line, to the trails passes through there. Will this be maintained? I couldn't tell from the FAQs whether this area will be fenced off or not. So I did mention that in that area, those trails will not be maintained and that area will be fenced. And at this point, we're probably looking at something like a wood split rail fence, uh, not chain link fence. first four floor classrooms have two doors what about the second floor classroom fire exits so i can tell you by code that classrooms only require one door for fire exiting on the second floor what we are doing though and i didn't highlight it but it was on the renderings is we have an interconnecting door between each of the two classrooms so that there is a second way out uh, for any other issue that may arise Comment, not a question, amazing, thank you. We appreciate the feedback. And further to the concern re trail access, the community trail plan currently shows the trail linking Aberdeen to Pineview to lie under the school site. Um, that's something we would have to look at. I don't know of any community trail plan. So that's something we'll have to look at and answer in the FAQ section. How much space will the after-school care have? So that after-school care room is the standard classroom size. So it's about 80 square meters.
So in, in terms of the number of actual spaces available for our students, that really is dependent on licensing. Uh, so we'd have to go through the licensing process to get an accurate number of how many actual spots for kids would be available. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent Riley. Next question. I'm also curious if you have any updates on the Aberdeen to Pineview Connection Road. Is the plan still egress for now? So I can tell you what I know, but really that's a question for the city of Kamloops. Um, I believe they're still looking at an egress road, but that would be a question for them. Will there be monitoring of impacts to the wildlife that frequent the ponds? So I can tell you, we do have an environmental consultant as part of our design team. Now, since we aren't touching Python Lake at all, um, we're expecting actually no impact. One of the requests we did get from Ministry of Environment was that we save some of the tree stumps that we cut down and put them into Python Lake to provide additional, basically sitting spots for ducks and other wild animals. Has there been modeling for traffic to support an intersection entrance versus a roundabout at the school entrance? Um, city takes care of design of roads, so that would be a question for the city of Kamloops. Uh, somebody's provided a link to the Kamloops Trail Master Plan. Thank you for that. And as I mentioned, we'll have a look at that and uh, provide an answer in the FAQ section on the website. Yes, and thank you for the specific reference in the trail master plan, that's helpful. Uh, comment, not a question, great presentation. Thank you for all the work in supporting Camelots to build another school. Thank you for the feedback. So another comment, my kids are watching tonight and they're excited to see what their new school is going to look like. Thank you very much for the feedback. That's what we always need to remember is why we're doing this and it's for the students. So we're not seeing any more questions, so we'll give it another minute or two. If you have anything else you'd like to ask or comment on, please do so.
So another question, can you outline your communication with the city on development to date? So we have been talking to the city for probably five to seven years on Pineview Valley. So we have been working together quite closely for a long time. Um, they've been of great assistance to us in providing what may be coming forth for development so we can use that to determine the capacity of the school. Another comment, school looks beautiful. Thank you for all your hard work and I will make sure to pass that on to our architects. They would be most appreciative to hear that comment. Is there an outline as to where the catchment area will be? Uh, there is not at this time. That will be something that we will be developing, I believe, next fall. And there will be a process uh, where the board will actually have to approve the catchment area. Okay, we just like to say thank you very much to all of you that have participated tonight. We we appreciate your time. We appreciate the feedback. Since we're not seeing any more questions, we're going to end the Zoom meeting. But feel free, if you think of anything later on, to submit it through the FAQ section on the website, and we will post all responses there. Thank you, and have a good night.